Grace and peace to you all. Welcome to worship here at Unity Presbyterian Church on this, the second Sunday of Easter. Whether you are a first-time visitor or a lifelong member, whether you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us online, you are most welcome here. If you are here in the sanctuary, I would encourage you to take a moment and pick up the friendship pad that is on one end of your pew. If you will write your name and pass those along. I hope it's a chance for you to get to know the names of those sitting around you. And visitors, I encourage you to leave a phone number or an email so that we might connect with you sometime this week. Today, I'd like to thank the Reverend Megan Watson for sharing worship leadership with me this morning. Megan is a well-known member of our congregation with her family, but right now she is also serving as our interim youth director. So thank you so much for sharing this role this morning while Matt's away. If you, um, this morning, you notice we are sharing the Lord's Supper. One note about that, we will be passing the trays through the pews. And it is easier if you want to go ahead and pass it to your neighbor, let them hold the tray for you, and that way you can pick up the bread or the cup easily. We will be holding the elements until all are served to eat together. If you are visiting with us and are looking for a church home and want to know more about unity or what it means to be a Presbyterian, we will be having a connections class next Sunday in the Fellowship Hall at 945. We hope you will come and meet some new faces and learn a little bit more about our life together. There are so many things happening in our community this week. I hope you will take a moment today to read through all the announcements. They are all worth your time, but I want to highlight a couple this morning. First, please note that everyone is invited to both services for Jerry Brady tomorrow morning. We will have the committal service at 1015 in Unity Cemetery. And then we will have her memorial service here at 11 a.m. And this will remember, we'll remember the promises of the resurrection and celebrate Jerry's life together. Also tomorrow morning, our Monday musings meeting will be in a new location. It will be in M312, which is our conference room. So you are welcome to join us there at 930 to discuss worship and scripture. And then on Tuesday, we have lots going on. Tuesday morning is our men's ministry breakfast. Men, if you have never gone, I encourage you to try it. It's wonderful food and fellowship. I've crashed it a few times and had a wonderful time. So check that out. There is more information in your bulletin, but I hope you will come to that. And then Tuesday afternoon, we have a blood drive happening. If you are able to come and donate, there is information in your bulletin about how to sign up for an appointment. Looking into next weekend, next Saturday, is our annual Go Mad Day, Go Make a Difference. Registration has closed, but we do still have room on several of our projects out at Bethel Woods. So if you are interested in spending the morning with us serving the community, please come see me this week and we will get you signed up. Also, last note, today is the first day of our stewardship season. You will hear more about that later in the service, but one thing for you to note now, we do have stewardship packets ready for you to pick up. They're in the hallway off the narthex, so if you will, please just find your name and pick that up on your way out. That will be helpful. Let us continue this morning with our worship of God. Please stand as you are able and join in our call to worship. Last Sunday was like every other day. Alarm clocks beeped, covers were removed, coffee was brewed, weary bodies came to life. And yet, it was like no other day. For the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty, and we knew it was love. So today we say again, the longest night is over. 
Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Let us worship the God of resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated. Though created by God in God's own image, we are guilty of setting our minds not on divine things, but on human things. But God promises us that if we call out and honestly ask for forgiveness, it will be given to us. In reverence and humility, let us approach the throne of grace. Let us pray first together and then silently. Lord, save us from ourselves. We continue to do the same things over and over, expecting different results. Lord, save us from doing too much. We go fishing every day, not noticing you waiting with meal on the beach. Lord, save us from doing too little. We say we love you, and yet so often we neglect your sheep. Lord, save us from ourselves. Help us to hear and respond when you say, follow me. Amen.
The tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. There is no darkness now, only light. God continues to renew us and to restore us. We are forgiven, loved, and restored, receiving the gift and promise of new life and resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Psalm of Israel, Psalm 133. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which evermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite our youngest friends, the children who are here, to gather down on the carpet with me. And if you are worshiping online, if you want to scooch a little closer to your screen so that we can share a special word together. Good morning, you all. How are you today? Good. Thank you all for being here. Worship is always so much better when you're here. So thank you for worshiping with us. So this morning, our story that we're going to hear is about Jesus having breakfast with the disciples on the beach. And you know what I thought? I was like, huh, I wonder if we could all have some kind of breakfast food together while we listen to it. That might be really fun, huh? What about donuts? Does anybody like donuts? Oh, me too. Me too. Okay, well, good. Why don't, would you all mind helping me pass out donuts to everybody? Yeah? Okay, well, you go pass out some donuts, and I'll wait here until you get back, okay? What's wrong? We don't have any donuts, do we? Oh, I'll think about that next time. I'll, I'll, I'll have to put that on my list. So it's hard to give away something we don't have, isn't it? Right? If we don't have any donuts, if I don't give you any donuts, you can't pass them out to everybody here, can you? No. No. Well, in the same way, Jesus is going to ask the disciples to go feed people. But first, Jesus is going to feed the disciples. He feeds them on the beach that morning, bread and fish, and he says, now I want you to go and feed people. And in the same way, we think about the things that we have that we can share with other people, not just food, although that's a really good place to start. There's lots of things we can share with each other that God has given us. Gifts of our time, like when we spend time with people, Gifts of things we're good at, like if you're really good at listening, or if you're good at energizing people, or if you're really good at playing games with people. Um, Gifts of our money, when we share money with people who need it. We have so many gifts that Jesus has given us, and that's what we're going to be thinking about as we start this conversation, okay? So can you think about this week things that you might have 
that you could share with people around you? Can you try that with me this week? Yeah, sound good? All right, we'll do that together, okay? Well, let's pray before we go. Will you repeat after me? Holy God, thank you for all the gifts you continue to give us. Thank you for feeding us. Help us to feed others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here. You can head off to nursery or children and worship or to sit with your families as we surround you with our blessing. Today does mark the first Sunday in our season of stewardship. This is the time of year when we look inwards to take stock of the gifts that we have, and then we begin to discern how we might share those gifts with the community. Stewardship is a time when we evaluate how we are living out our gratitude and the sharing of our time and talent and treasure. It can be a deeply meaningful thing to think about each year as we join in this conversation. And as we do that this year, we're going to be exploring the theme, sharing the good news. And as we look at ways that we share the good news, we are going to be focusing on post-resurrection encounters with Christ. And today we begin with the story of Christ having breakfast with his disciples on the beach. This story takes place not too long after the resurrection, and there's already been two encounters with Jesus. The disciples have been in a locked room, and Jesus appeared in their midst, and then again Christ appeared to them when Thomas was with them later. So this encounter on the beach will be the third time he has showed up. So let us listen now for the word of the Lord from the Gospel of John, chapter 21 verses 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered together there were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep, love me. Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, word made flesh, let us come to this word open to being surprised. Silence our agendas today, banish our assumptions, confound our expectations, penetrate the corners of our hearts with your word. We pray that you will and we wait with great anticipation. Amen. So here we are, not long after the resurrection. The disciples are back in Galilee where it all began. They are back home and they are still grappling with recent events. Having experienced all they saw in Jerusalem, a powerful Passover meal, then the traumatic loss of a dear friend and teacher, and now perhaps the confusion and fear of the resurrection The disciples have gone back to what they know, hometown and their fishing. They are keeping their hands busy as if that will quiet the confusion in their minds. But even the one task that they thought they could fall back on easily isn't working for them. They fish all night and yet they catch nothing. That is, until Jesus shows up. And at first, the disciples aren't sure who it is that's yelling at them from the shoreline, which always made me wonder what Jesus looked like. He must have looked different somehow for them not to recognize him. After all, they've spent lots of time in ministry with him, and he's already appeared to them two other times after the resurrection. But the text doesn't say anything about his appearance. Instead, the disciples recognize him by the things that he does. Jesus tells them where to throw their nets, and then they begin to haul in a heavy load of fish. The disciples have nothing to show for their labors until Christ shows up. In fact, in every gospel when the disciples are fishing, they only ever catch fish when Jesus is present. So here in John's gospel, as they are trying to lift the overly full nets, all of a sudden it clicks. This must be Jesus. Then once they are ashore, Jesus has a fire going and invites them to have breakfast with him. So the disciples gather around and Jesus takes the food and he breaks it and he passes it around like he had done so many times before in their presence. It was as if Jesus was telling them through this simple meal, here, taste and see, drink and remember, and remember who you are. And the disciples remembered. They knew they were sitting with their Lord. And something here that's easy for us to miss Notice in the text that Jesus already has fish and bread cooking on the fire, and yet he asked the disciples to bring some of their fish to add to the meal. This is significant. It would be easy to assume that perhaps the risen Christ has new resurrection powers that would allow him to just create food from nothing and put out a buffet spread for however many people needed to eat that day. But he doesn't do that. 
Like he does in all of the gospel meals, when he feeds people, he always works with whatever food is offered from those around him. Author Barbara Brown Taylor comments on this meal in her book, Always a Guest. She says, Jesus always works with whatever food the disciples bring him. His miracles depend on their willingness to give him what they have. He carries no bottomless backpack full of supper bread so that he can be the one man solution that the world needs. Instead, he relies on his followers to remember what he taught them when he sent them out two by two. When God answers the prayer for daily bread, God does it through other people. Taylor goes on to say, They can see the charcoal fire behind him already laid with fish on it and bread. Why can't they just eat that? They cannot just eat that, because then it would not be communion without some of their fish too. They cannot eat it because they cannot be his disciples without becoming feeders too. This meal is how they will know it is the Lord, because he feeds them body and soul. Friends, in the midst of their labor, Jesus has called to the disciples. He has fed them and reminded them to go out and to feed others. Jesus does the same for us. Jesus meets us in the midst of our labors in everyday, ordinary places that we find ourselves, not just in the glory of Easter Sunday, not just in those mountaintop moments, every day of our lives, each week that we gather, where we are in the community, in our offices, in school, at home, around our own tables, in the park, walking down the street. Jesus calls to us and continues to feed us and to go tell us to feed others. This is a transformative way that we practice sharing the good news through the breaking of bread, through the sharing and contributing of what we have to become feeders and disciples ourselves. As we begin this season of stewardship this week, like I was sharing with the children, I want all of us to consider what God is asking us to bring to the table. Perhaps it is your time. Perhaps you have time to share with people around you. The ministry of presence is one of the most precious gifts that we give to one another. In fact, many scholars believe that the most valuable thing the Good Samaritan gave to the injured man that day wasn't a ride to the end or bandages for his wounds or even money to pay for the room. It was his time because no one else shared that gift that day. Maybe you have talents you've never considered a talent before. Maybe you're a good listener. Maybe you are the person who can listen to a friend who desperately needs to share something. Maybe you are a great organizer, or you like to build things, or you love to cook or create. Maybe you're the calm presence in the midst of chaos. Perhaps you do have treasure to bring to the table, finances that can make a difference in the lives of others, a property or space that could be used for a community need, meals to provide, clothing to donate, school supplies to share. Whatever gifts we have, whatever it is that you know feeds you and might feed others, that's the exact thing Christ is asking us to bring to the table. To become those who break bread with all who might be hungry and needing nourishment. This is how we share the good news. Through the sharing of the communion meal that we have all contributed to. Barbara Brown Taylor finishes her thoughts on this story with these words. When you break bread, the bread opens up. When the bread opens up, 
so does the table. When the table opens up, so does your heart. When your heart opens up, so do your hands, reaching out for some of what you have to hand it to someone else, only to discover that you have more instead of less. This is how the miracle goes on happening again and again and again. Friends, may it be so. Let us pray. God of resurrection and of breakfast on the beach, thank you for feeding us. Help us to go and feed others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin to respond to God's call this morning, I invite you all to stand as you are able, as we share these words from our affirmation of faith from a sanctified art. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday, and we know the darkness before dawn. And still, and still we believe. We believe that again and again the sun will rise. God will draw near. Again and again we will march towards justice. The tomb will be empty. Love will win. Again and again. God will lead the church. We will be loved. The journey will not be perfect. We will need to rise before dawn. We will need angels along the way. But again and again, the sun will rise. We believe. Amen. You may be seated. Each week during our season of stewardship, we will have a moment for stewardship where we get to hear the voices of the members of our congregation as they share how they have had good news experiences in their own lives. And so this morning to start us off, I'd like to invite Corey Cameron up here to share. Good morning. Dr. Matt asked me to share a story of good news that our family has experienced at Unity Presbyterian Church. And while we as a family felt, feel committed to supporting this place and its ministry with our time, talents, and treasure, many small moments have woven together over the last six years to where we feel this is our church and the one we want to support. Two things stand out to me that show God's generosity is an expression of love. First the music program led by Margaret Monroe. Sitting behind me now. Over there. Yes, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I was surprised to see my wife and mother of two busy kids volunteering to join the Joyful Ringers. For her to add something else to our never-ending list of responsibilities and activities seemed odd at first, but she comes away from this act of service with a renewed purpose. Our children are active in the children's choir and are learning that pledging their time and talent to help lead worship spreads Jesus' love for us all. Second is the opportunity to participate in Sunday school. Catherine McGregor's commitment to maintaining a wide range of classes for adults to try out is so appreciated. My wife and I attend the Faith Connections class while our children are learning about God's word in the children's Sunday school class. Had this particular class not been available and without multiple no pressure invitations to join from others in the class, we would be missing out on an enriching experience. I enjoy the format of the class and rotate in as a facilitator because we are amongst friends. And I like to plan out a lesson and see where we are led in response to God's word. Reverends Matt and Molly are leading Unity Presbyterian Church with the vision of Christ first. Our family is excited about coming to church and believe in supporting this vision with our treasure, time, and talents. From pork butts and pancake suppers to the weekly draft from our checking account and volunteering in children and youth events, our family gives cheerfully because we trust God. Matthew 6, 26 gives us assurance that God will provide for us 
even when we give from what feels like deep poverty. Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. In closing, I hope you will join my family and me in sharing the good news by making or renewing your commitment to Christ's ministry at Unity with your pledge of time, talents, and treasure on Commitment Sunday, April the 28th. Thank you. With gladness in our hearts and minds, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to God. Freely we have received, let us now freely give. Let us receive this morning's offering.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have given us so much, especially the gift of reconciliation through your Son, Jesus Christ. For you, the God of peace, have promised that you will always be with us. Now, in gratitude for all your many gifts, we bring our tithes and offerings to you. We ask your blessing on these gifts and on our lives so that your peace and justice may be furthered in your world. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, here it is. The table that the risen Christ has set before us. You'll see there is already bread and juice here, but there is room for more. Because this is not communion without the gift of your presence, the unique gift that only you can bring. So come. You are invited by a God who loves you. Whether you have been here many times or whether this is the first time, whether you have great doubt or whether you have no doubt in your mind, you are welcome here just as you are. Let us taste and see and drink and remember this wonderful feast that Christ sets for all of us. And as we gather here, let us pray. O Lord, our God, we remember the beginning, how you shaped chaos into creation, spoke oceans and stars and continents into life, and two people to love and praise you. You formed us in your image and made a covenant with us to be our faithful God. Yet we broke the faith. We chose the ways of death and brother turned against brother and peoples against peoples. You sought to renew our life. You brought us out of slavery in Egypt, fed us with manna and sent us the law to guide our living. You spoke through prophets, sages, and poets to remind us that we were made to build each other up, that our life together should reflect your justice and love. In the fullness of time, you came among us as Jesus of Nazareth, Mary's first child, God in a baby. In your ministry, you brought hope, healing, and new life to all who were trod down by society. In an empire built off military power, you lifted up the powerless. In a world prepared to worship the emperor, you remained close to God in heaven. In a religious atmosphere clinging to old ways, you lifted up new interpretations of God's mercy. Your faithfulness was stronger than fear, and where our life died for us. And on the third day you rose again, to show us that death is not more powerful than God and that love cannot be quenched. You appeared first to the women and then to the disciples, giving them a mission to share your hope with the world and to be your body, your hands and feet, to work, to serve, to heal and to bless. Now you are with us always to the end of the age and our strength is in you. Holy Spirit, pour yourself out, we pray, into these gifts of bread and cup. Help us to see that the bread we break and the cup we bless are more than a meal, but a sign of your grace, power, and love. In this meal, may we recognize you and rise up and follow once more, united and strengthened, bold and witness proclaiming your love to all we know, until you come again in glory. Until that day, we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done, on on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and and the the power, power, and the the glory glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, each time we come to this table and we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again in glory. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast together. Will our servers please come forward? the bread of life. Let us eat together.
the cup of salvation. Let us drink of it together. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, here at this table, your promise of life is made tangible. We have rested in the depth of your love, and we have tasted your nourishing and nurturing presence. Together at this table, you have offered us life. Together, by your grace, we accept the life you offer, and we give you thanks. Amen. Friends, as our time of worship draws to a close and our lives of service begin anew this week, let us go remembering the ways in which Christ has fed us and considering the ways in which we are called to feed others with the gifts that we have. And as you go, remember, life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those that journey the way with us. So what shall we do? 
Be swift to love, make haste to be kind, that God's light and love, justice and joy might be for you and all people everywhere. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.